and so we're recording and welcome everyone who's here hi rochelle hi sarah hi everyone out out there we have christina corelli here from wonders joining us again if you've watched the others or if you've joined us um, and our theme is what to expect when you're adopting and today's topic is the digital platform which I think is really exciting so yes. i'm gonna just turn it right over to christina and then at the end if you have questions that are about csd or if you have questions for christina we'll be out for whoever wants questions but um yeah we'll be here till 4 30 and then a little after if you have questions so perfect well this I'm just going to share this um, bit.ly really fast. If you want to scan the code, you can pause the video. It goes to our Padlet. I think we've shared this before, but what's really neat on the Padlet, there's a whole section dedicated to the digital. Um, some things that I will talk about today, but some other things that we don't have time for. Um, some really neat things, the leveled reader library, the audio recording device, just some really kind of more high level things that um, today's more of a general session. There's also some great videos when you get your stuff. Let me jump over, oops. Let me jump over to the actual Padlet that I just shared with you. So there's a whole column on exploring the digital, okay? And there's some great videos down in there if you kind of keep scrolling down. But if you scroll all the way to the left when you get in there, you're going to see um, some unpacking videos on the left. So see the left column here, where when you do get your printed materials, this is a great walkthrough of some things that you're going to find. He's unpacking the sample box, but you're going to see some materials just so he explains each of the core pieces, just so you, you know, know what you're looking for there. Secondly, is this is your demo code. So if you'd like to click along with me today, I'm going to be going kind of fast. So I always recommend maybe take notes. I'm going to give you a list of like things to look for and resources. And you can always play the, um, catch it on the replay so that you can pause and then click along and then play and then pause and click along. Um, because today might be kind of fast for you, but Definitely have a pencil and um, a note-taking device handy, a little post-it or something where you can um, start making a list of resources. Because I'm, I'm going to be sharing quite a few things in our short time together. Now, I know since the last couple of years, we're looking at digital a lot differently, aren't we? Like what we can do with it, the functionality, the usability, how it's going to streamline my instruction, but not create more planning on my part, right? That's the whole point. It's not just another space and place to go and do things. It's actually gonna streamline your instruction. So here's our plan for today. I'm gonna to show you the general teacher platform and you're just gonna use that demo code until you get your own account. But I will kind of mention a, cute, uh, a couple key things when you do get your own account that are really important to remember. So general navigation, just touring the site a little bit. Planning and presenting, right? Because that's kind of the hub of what we do. We plan and then we present it and teach it. We plan and then we present it and teach it. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks there. The e-tools. So of all of our ebooks, any ebook that you pull up so that you're familiar with all the annotation tools, the, the supports there for teachers and students, but also how you can see students work. One of the cool things is we have this auto sync feature where students can work in their main component, that reading, writing companion and you never have to assign it. It's ready and waiting in the student platform. I'll show you what that looks like today. Um, and they go in and work on it and I could see their work at any time and provide them digital feedback, no assigning back and forth. So that is one way that the digital um, components are gonna really streamline your instruction for you. Um, additional instructional resources. We have a whole resource library, so many good, so much good stuff, but you can kind of get lost in it. So I'm gonna teach you a little trick of how to favorite things. They go to a little favorite portal when you get your own account, kind of like favoriting websites in your browser. Like when you bookmark certain web pages, you know, when you have to pay your bills or favorite websites. So that's a little tip. And then online professional development, what you can do if you want to get ahead of this, right? Implementation of a new program is a challenge. So we need to give ourselves grace um, and know that we're going to be learning this whole first year, right? It takes a year really of solid instruction and wonders to wrap your head around it. And so for the people that want to kind of dig in ahead of time, I'm going to share some amazing resources in the professional development library to kind of 
calm you, disarm you a little bit, you know, and, and give you just the gist of what you're going to be getting into with Wonder. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go into my digital space. Let me get out of the Padlet there for a moment. So when you first log into that demo code, you are going to see all the grades, right? And you're going to see actually two books. You're going to see the teacher edition and you're going to see the student edition. For today's purposes, we're going to be working the teacher's edition. Look, this is where you're going to spend 99.99999% of your time as a Wonders instruct instructor. The student edition, that is there for you to show the students maybe those first weeks of school, you know, the layout, the navigation, kind of like what I'm doing with you today so that they can get savvy with it. One thing I always recommend is maybe um, use, using, we have something called a digital scavenger hunt. You can do the first week of school with your students. It could be something they work on um, throughout that first week. And it's a space and place for them to play in the digital, find assets, you know, and explore a little bit and discover. So the digital scavenger hunt is probably one thing I would write down, something to weave into your first week um, of, um, you know, back to school season. So I'm going to jump in the teacher's edition. So you're going to find your grade level book. Um, they're all different colors. You'll probably figure out your color really quick. And I'm going to jump in that teacher book. Now, when I jump in this teacher book, it's going to take me if you're in the demo code, remember that demo code is for the whole state of Utah. So there's a lot of people using it. Okay. So people play around in here, but that's what it's for. Um, so you're going to see, um, let's just talk about layout here. We have wonders in the left corner. That is actually the home button. So it's your home plate, if you will, home base. So if you ever get sucked in, you know how it can happen, right? Get in the black hole of stuff. You get deep and you don't know how to get back. <laughs> Just click on wonders and it's gonna take you back to this landing page, okay? So you're gonna see various tabs across the top, planning, resources, assessment and data, writing and research, manage and assign, and the binder. Now, um, we're gonna go through a couple things in each of these, but there is a great asset in the PD section I'll talk about later that has supports for each of these kind of laid out. So you have some blades here. See my light and dark blue blades. When I click on this, this is navigating through the units. Now, you will be setting up a calendar. So when you first get your account, it's gonna ask you your first day of wonders instruction, not the first day of school. I'm gonna tell you right now, the most important thing you could do when you first get in your account after they're all set up with your district, when it asks you the first day of instruction, you put the first day that you're starting wonders. Because sometimes we don't start it till week two, right? We're doing all that back to school stuff the first week. So really look at your calendar, get with your team and decide when it is you are starting wonders. Maybe it's the following Monday and that's the date you will choose. That will load all the wonders program in because it's the calendar that syncs to the student account and lets them talk to each other. So that's very, very important. So normally when your calendar is all set up in your own account, you don't have to worry about picking a unit in a week because it will know exactly where you are. And throughout the year, if you have an assembly, you know, a character assembly, a field trip, um, or the day just, you know, you have a fire drill, you know, things happen, right? And you don't get to reading that day. You can add a non-teaching day really easily. It will bump everything. It'll just kind of move the whole calendar really easy to use. But for now, if you want to navigate and explore in the various units, you have your units down the left. So kindergarten, you're going to see actually 10 units because you have 10 three-week units. And starting in first grade, you're going to have six units six weeks each. Now, one thing I've talked to your leaders there in Canyons about is week six, starting in grade one, that is actually, there's no new instruction there. That's a time to review, reteach, enrich, extend, do some summative assessment. Some districts scrap week six altogether. So that would be something you would talk to your leaders about. You have five weeks of new instruction for every unit. Okay, so I'm going to go to, I'm going to stay here actually, unit three, week three, and so that'll take you to your weeks. Now, it's important to know here, and we talked about this, I believe, in our last Bite Size PD, in the upper grades, your first two tech studies are two weeks long. So even though I'm in unit three here, week three, this is my second tech set, because the first tech set was two weeks, the second tech set is two weeks. And then the third tech set is one week because that week six is that summative review, extend, et cetera. So I'm gonna go to week three, which is actually the second tech study. 
and I'm on day one. So you'll see actually, if I go to week four here, notice the days change. So I have my units, my weeks, I'm gonna go back to week three. So I'm on a day one here, my days of the week, and this syncs to the calendar. So if I hit today, it will know I'm on unit three, week three, day four today, okay? So I have my units, my weeks, I have my days, and then underneath are your digital lessons just for today. So here I'm on day four. I see all of my lessons for reading, all of my lessons for small group differentiated instruction, all of my lessons for writing. And then if you are an interventionist that is gonna be using our intensive connected intervention program, WonderWorks, that is a layered subscription. I would just wanna clarify, if you are a core wonders teacher, you will not see this WonderWorks intervention tab. This is for the special education, the tier two, whoever the interventionists that'll be using our intervention program are, they have access to all of Wonders plus WonderWorks. So it's a, like a layer, like I'm gonna age myself. Remember the old school transparencies that you'd layer on top of the thing, right? Okay, with the overhead projector. <laughs> um, so it's a layered subscription on top of the Wonder subscription. So my interventionists out there, you'll still go into your Wonders book and then you'll see Wonder Works there, really important to know. So also on this landing page, besides that day's lessons, you'll see a ready-made presentation. I'm gonna actually jump back to day one and open up my reading tab, okay? So you'll see that introduce the concept, our read aloud, and then moving into the shared read on day one. This is a third grade example, by the way. So corresponding to my lessons is the ready-made everyday presentation. So every grade has this. And it's going to be the, all the resources that are in your lesson plans here on the left in that presentation. So if you wanna project things digitally, you have today's, and when I say today's presentation, it's everything for today. Okay, so when I hit go, it's going to open up a new window, which is nice. You can't get lost. You can just exit out when you're done, right? You see some tools along the bottom. This would be something I would definitely play with in your own time. Remember when you got an iPhone for the first time? How did you learn it? You yeah, played. We got to play with stuff, okay? So <clears throat> I would definitely play with the tools. You'll see this little pull down button here under lesson resources. When I click on that, then it'll drop down what is more like a little carousel of resources, right? And it'll move you through in the order of your lesson plans, any resource or asset that is digital that goes along with today's full lessons, okay? So it's a lot because it's everything for the entire day, okay? Now, um, one resource I wanna talk about or asset in the digital um, component is the presentation is connected to the plans, right? So think of the letter P. Presentation connects to the lesson plans and those lesson plans come from your planner. So the first place you wanna explore and kind of dig around in is the weekly planner. Now you do have a suggested planner in your teacher's edition. This is the digital version. And this is way cool because in the print, you can't really move things around, right? You can't change the print, but in the digital, you sure can. So one thing you might wanna check out under the plan and the planner is you have all of the lessons that are put on individual, I call these little um, tiles. And the reason that we chunked each lesson, mini lesson out like this is because you can grab them, move them and reorder them. Now, there is science to our instruction. So don't go crazy here, okay? What I'm talking about is if for some reason on day one, the day gets away from you and you do not have time for this vocabulary strategy lesson on context clues, I can grab it very easily and drag it and drop it to day two. That way tomorrow when my calendar says, hey, it's day two and I open day two's plans, now my lesson will be first that I moved over. Okay, so let me just show you an example. Let's say that I want to lead the day with vocabulary. Not that I recommend this, but I'm just gonna give it as an example. I'm gonna move this lesson to the top of my day. So I reordered, right? So this lesson now, remember the planner talks to my presentation and how do I get back home? I hit wonders, it's my home base. So when I click on wonders and I get back home, what do you notice changed in the presentation? Now I see 
my vocabulary cards are first because in the planner, I moved that lesson to the top on day one. So that syncs to my plans, which syncs to the presentation. Isn't that cool? So now when I hit go and it opens the presentation, the first thing I see are my vocabulary cards because I moved this whole chunk up to the top. All right. But again, be careful. Although you are experts in the art of teaching, we are experts in the science of learning. And so if you start moving everything all over the place, it can kind of get wonky. And there is a method to our madness as far as sequence and the systematic approach to our instruction. The other thing I'd like to show in that planner, the planner is like one of the main key things I want you to play with when you go play on your own. So when I go back to that planner, on the same page, you have your standards. This is great for if you need to submit those, you can print them. There's live links to the lessons and that calendar. This is the calendar. You'll see mine has a ton of none because I've kind of been moving things around. So the planner, there is a calendar video in the professional development um, that shows you how to manipulate the calendar. I'm not going to go way into it right now, but it would be something we would talk about in your initial training once you set up day one of instruction. So that's all you need to worry about now is when it has you set up the calendar, pick your first day of wonders instruction. Christina? Yes. Um, I, it was my understanding the district can push out that calendar. They can. And mm -hmm. I, we, we were hoping to do that. So for awesome. information, we would that's great. the calendar as the first day of school. And then that means the days like where you have parent teacher conference, those kind of mm -hmm. things will all be labeled in there because there would be no school because of the comp day. Perfect. And have those holidays all in there so it would sync for you. Perfect. I, we're hoping to do that. Just okay. FYI, yeah. Okay. And just let whoever's setting that up know it's first day of wonders instruction that you want teachers to get started in wonders, not necessarily the first day of school. So that's really important. Um, so once, I, let's say I move things around, I'm like, oh, I made a mistake. All you have to do is hit reset. The reason I'm showing you this today too is when you're in the demo code, remember there's a lot of people playing around in the demo. That's what it's there. It's like a dummy code, right? So when you go play in the planner, just hit that reset because all sorts of people go in and mess it all up. <laughs> so definitely hit reset. The other thing, maybe you are short on time and I can't do all of this, right? Maybe I don't have 120. I know that your district actually has a good amount of minutes, but again, days get away from us sometimes. So one of the options in your planner options is something called the core pathway. So the core pathway, you, when you turn that on, notice some of these little lesson tiles gray out, okay? What we've done in Wonders 23 is we've identified the nuts and bolts, the must do's versus mm, some things are more extraneous, supplemental, ancillary. So what it will do is it'll gray out other items. There's more optional pieces in the upper grades than in the primary grades, right? Because they're building on those foundational skills. So now it is grayed out. And now these kind of extras will not show up in those lesson plans, right? Because the planner syncs to the plans, which sync to the presentation, right? And so you might gray out some things, but you might say, hey, my group needs phonics. I need this phonics lesson in third grade because I'm really addressing learning recovery right now. So I can go ahead and reactivate it. So now all of a sudden I have a fully customized plan. I've reordered things. I moved something from day one to day two. I'd used the core pathway, but now I've actually reactivated this phonics lesson. And now I'm gonna blow your mind because maybe not my whole homeroom class needs the phonics lesson. So guess what you can do? Anything in the whole group instruction, I can grab it. This is the beautiful thing about digital, you guys. Look, I can move it down to my small group instruction so that when I get to that in the presentation, it's actually that lesson will fall in the small group. And again, if I mess it up, if I wanna put everything back, I just hit reset. So that is always the first thing I show when I talk about planning and presenting. The planner under the plan tab syncs to the lesson plans, another P, on your digital asset on each day, which syncs to the presentation. So if you're a math person out there, P to the third power, P cubed, remember that, the planner, the plans, and the presentation. So that's always something I like to show. The other thing is once you choose a lesson, so let's say you're teaching, you're using your teacher's iPad and you're teaching digitally, you're walking around the room, 
and you're starting this lesson on the shared read. You can go ahead on today's date and click on that lesson. What we've done is we've taken the digital resources that are from that whole presentation. Remember that whole day's presentation? It was a lot of resources, right? But we've broken it down for the each lesson as well. So this might be more doable for teachers. So when I click on this lesson, I'm only gonna see the digital assets above the lesson plan in what we call this little resource carousel. So as I click from lesson to lesson, you'll think you'll see the resources change. And I know it's in the presentation because it has this little presentation icon. So it's just in two different places. You can open up the full presentation for the whole day on that landing page. Or if you're more comfortable in a more chunked approach, I can click on each individual digital lesson plan. Now it's highlighted in blue. Here's my lesson plan. Now I will say, this is what I call a skeletal version of the lesson plan. You're not gonna have all of the wraparound support that you have in the full teacher's edition, but it does have the nuts and bolts of the lesson and the instructions so you could view it on your iPad walking around the room. So I have my digital lesson plans down below. I have on the right, you'll see standards, objectives, learning goals, even note-taking, you can write yourself some notes, um, things you wanna remember. And now I can jump into anything in the presentation, such as the reading, writing companion. So look for the little lesson carousel. Those resources will change as you click from lesson to lesson. See, I'm getting different resources here that I can just jump into, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into that ebook. I'm gonna go to my shared read lesson on day one, and I'm gonna click into this reading, writing companion. Okay, so I'm going to jump in that first ebook, and you could tell it's the reading writing companion because the image of it has that margin down the left side. Okay, so now I'm in my ebook as a teacher. Now it's important to note here that students have that same ebook. Here I am in a student's account. Students already have ready and waiting for them this week the correct stories, because remember the calendar that you set up? Uh, the calendar syncs to the student platform. That's why it's important to keep the calendar up to date. So if you're taking longer, maybe you need Monday also, I wouldn't recommend doing that all year long because you're not gonna get through all your instruction, but let's say you, know, you had a crazy week and of course learning a new program takes you a little longer and maybe I need Monday also, and I'm not done on Friday. I can easily in the calendar extend it because if I don't extend it, students are on Monday, guess what they're gonna see? They're gonna see the next text set. We want them to keep that calendar updated so they see the correct read, read materials in their little carousel. So here I'm in a student's account, they click on read. And again, we have a digital scavenger hunt for students that they fill out, that they get to know all of these icons. It's really easy for them to follow. We created it during the pandemic. You can just search, I'll show you how to search something. Um, to read. Uh, digital scavenger hunt. So I'm gonna click and just show you that the student book looks identical to the teacher's book. So there's that, now this student has marked up a bunch of stuff in the book, but you'll see that this looks just like the teacher, same tools, right? Audio support, you have language summaries. We've actually added a few languages lately, um, a summary of the shared read if they wanna hear that. What's beautiful about all the audio support, it's there for the student should they need it, but they can always turn it off via the audio button on the bottom left, okay? Um, I'm gonna go back to my teacher account. Now, how do I know it's the, I'm in the teacher book? Because that was kind of crazy, right? I went from the student. Because I have all these special tools up here, but you'll see a little teacher tool. See the little person? That is called the student review icon. So as students are playing with these digital tools, another thing I would set up the first week or two of school is a digital tool PlayStation. Give them some tasks. Put it on a little um, note card of three things they need to do. Maybe they're highlighting all the verbs, just practicing using the highlighter. The only trick with the tools is if they're using the highlighter, any of these tools, they have to click on the tool first. That might be something you write down. So I click on the tool, now it's highlighted. Now I pick the word or the phrase that I wanna highlight and then I can choose my color. This is great because if you've ever handed a kindergartner or heck, a fifth grader, a big orange fat highlighter, you end up with a big bright orange page, <laughs> right? And so this is nice, it streamlines it for the students. So you always click on the tool first, then this is the pen. The pen has different colors, width of stroke, 
They can write right on the page if you want. This is great for the iPad users or touchscreen users. Great for the primary students that might have manual dexterity issues and they can handle a touch screen, right? Um, you hit that check mark, it sets it and forgets it. Um, a little virtual notepad. This one's, this comes in handy, a little notepad, because they can take notes, they can ask questions. Maybe you do a notice and wonder activity, right? And they can write on a little post-it note and it drops right on the page. You also have this pencil. If there's any digital tool that I want you to start with, it's the pencil. Here's why. If we want students to interact with text, mark it up and annotate, we need to keep it simple. And this is based on the research of Dr. Doug Fisher. If you've read his, I highly recommend rigorous reading. He talks about any grade can really annotate. We need to simplify it though. So you're going to see questions throughout the, um, let me change this to a single page so I can make it more clear. You're going to see questions like draw a box around this, circle that, underline. The prompts match the annotation tool. There's a reason the pencil, besides this eraser mark, is the closest tool. It is the tool that your students will use the most. So yeah, the highlighters fun, the pens fun, the post-its, but the pencil aligns to the actual questions of what's happening, okay? So you'll see, then I click on my tool, word or phrase, right? And I can drag it and make it a whole phrase and underline it if I want to in red. But the neat thing about the teacher digital platform is, besides all those cool customizing the planner and the presentation, one of the, there's just two more things I want to share with you, but this is like the final kind of instructional one is this teacher icon. The student didn't have this. I'm in my own account. You will never have to go and log in as a, as a student because as a teacher, that student review icon is like the wizard behind the curtain. I can at any moment click on that guy, my class. Now, some teachers that departmentalize or pull out, they might have multiple classes. You'll probably, core teachers, you'll have probably one class. You'll see all of your students, right? So now I can click on Winnie Foster. That's whose book I was just in. And I can click on it and boom, all of her work, although it looks like kind of a hot mess right now because I was just like playing around showing people. So I'll see all of her annotations. They can type, by the way, right on the lines here. See, she typed, he was very hungry. She dropped some little post-it notes. I can tell the yellow post-it notes, student notes. She dropped um, a little, I wonder, okay, whatever. Um, and all of her markups. What you might notice are there are some blue post-it notes. Guess who that is? That is me. Because not only do students always have access to their ebook, I never have to assign it as long as my calendar's up to date. I have access to them via the student review icon or the wizard behind the curtain. And then I have access to digital feedback tools. So it's not just about seeing their work, it's about interacting with them digitally. So if I, as a teacher, have the touch screen, I have the teacher red pen, they did not have the color red on the student side. Now, if you have PTSD from the red pen in elementary school, I apologize, or don't make the rules. But the red pen is the teacher tool. So when the students see a red pen, they know that that is teacher feedback. And when they see a blue post-it note, that means that is a teacher post-it, right? That blue post-it note that says teacher. So I've done some, I think you're limited to eight post-it note teacher notes. I don't know why you would do more, but um, so isn't that neat? I mean, that really is gonna help streamline some people think digital is going to take more time and it doesn't because you never have to assign it. I don't have to log in as a student ever. What I was just doing on that, like you'll never have to do that, right? Because you can see their work in their main component. So before we wrap up our 30 minute session today, there's just two things I want to point you to, to get you started. If you're one of those people that really wants to dig in, I would highly recommend going to the professional development section under the resource tab. The professional development section is, it's, there's a lot happening here, but there's a lot of support, okay? The first thing I would recommend for anyone that wants to dig into wonders before we actually train you and get started, we always would like our teacher, what we call the basics course. So the basics course, it's the first thing you'll see under learn to use wonders. When you click on it, it's amazing. By the way, it's going to give you a certificate at the end. I think it gives you like a four hour certificate. I just recertified, so that's like on the front of my mind. So um, so whatever grade band you're in, you click on it and it's gonna, look at this, it's gonna walk you through an overview, the resources, um, including the instruction, 
teacher materials that you're using, even by the way, support in setting up a, a classroom that's efficient and productive. Um, and even starting the year doing some diagnostics and getting to know your students. So I always recommend that teachers take the basics course before anything else. Okay, so that is something to keep in mind. The other item is if you want to know more about the digital platform, there is a tab in this professional development section called digital help. And it's going to actually walk you through. If you look at these, they might look familiar because these match the tabs at the top. So there's, there's information, videos, um, and guides for every single tab in the digital. I mean, I couldn't go through all this today, but um, just know that it is available there for you. I think I may have gotten through everything. On the Padlet, I would definitely recommend jumping to the digital column because in the, did I pass it? In the digital column, you'll see, um, where is it? You'll see videos and there it is, explore the digital. Um, on the assessments, on the reports, there's a great observational rubric. There's an audio recording device. There's a leveled reader light. But there's so many things I could have showed you today, but in 30 minutes, we wanted to keep it to that planning and presenting, getting you started, giving you just enough information to just be a little dangerous and get you exploring in wonders. So that's all I have for you all today. And now we can open it up for questions if there are any relating to the digital assets of wonders. I'm gonna click on wonders and get to home base just in case you need to see something. Thank you, Christina. We're so happy um, that you were able to present that. I know that was fast and furious, but <laughs> those of you in attendance, um, also Christina and Craig, I'm not sure which one will be at the DTL summit going through best practices of digital teaching with wonders. So. Um, that will be a course that you'll want to look for as well. So questions, Rochelle, Sarah, anyone else? I have one, but it might be for after the recording stops. <laughs> okay. All okay. right. Okay. We can, we can do that. Sarah, do you have a question at all? I'm not about the digital platform. It looks like it has a lot of great resources. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, stop the recording and then I will also be putting in the chat the um, link. Let me um, put the link in here to um, how you can get, um, oh, I thought I had it all ready to go here. <laughs> yeah, isn't Is that it their PD credit? Happen? Yeah, I wanna give you the link to, um, how to get your credit is what I would like to have you see. So there is a link here. This goes to um, this goes to a, a slide deck and the last slide is how it tells you how to get your um, credit for your session today. Or if you are doing a lot of credit to be able to get um, what that would be. So go to the last slide to be able to see that. Because we're going to use the Wonder slide deck today instead of our mm -hmm. slide deck, and that's why you need to go there. So I'm going to stop the recording, and then we'll okay. um, see what's next. All righty. Thanks, everyone.